Hello and thanks for joining me tonight. My name is Mike Tellerino. I'm the CEO and founder of K9 for Veterans. Um, tonight I have two very special guests with me. I, I have uh, Kyle with his dog Omega and I have Rob with his service dog Eleven. Uh, Kyle, why don't we start out with you? Sure. Tell us a little backstory about yourself, please. Sure, I'm uh, 33 years old. I was in the United States Army from 2007 to 2015, and I did three tours. Like, like Kyle, I'm 33 years old as well. I joined the Army um, in, two, in 2008, and I um, did one tour in Iraq and served with uh, the 10th Mountain Division. Well, we're here tonight to talk about veterans uh, suffering from PTSD. Um, you know, I think a lot of our viewers want to know what's it like in the course of a day for a veteran, and we hear so much about veterans struggling with PTSD. Kyle, why don't you start out by telling us a little bit about what's a typical day like for you struggling with PTSD? Absolutely. Um, I generally toss and turn throughout the night, so mm -hmm. waking up is a bit of a chore. Um, Nightmares can um, be extreme sometimes, um, and then that sets me up for a relatively hard morning. Um, but I take some medication, and um, that helps get me started. And then I uh, go to work. What's it like, though? I mean, what are you, what are your what's the basic struggles that you're having in during the course of a day? Um, I get angry or I get anger um, flare-ups um, so I've uh, I've had to learn a lot of coping skills to uh, manage a day successfully Kyle I've known you for a while now and you've got such a great personality you're so outgoing now you, you uh, we have you come out and talk to groups on behalf of K9 to let other veterans that are thinking about getting the service dog to let them know how your service dog has helped them. You've come such a long way. What do you attribute that to? I most definitely attribute that to having um, Omega. He helps me with medication alerts first thing in the morning um, and then just uh, Getting through the day. Um, if I ever space out, he brings me back. Um, if he sees I start to get tense, he starts to act out. Right. <laughs> like now. <laughs> well, listen, there's no reason for you to be nervous. We're all friends here. Absolutely. You've been training with Omega now for how long? Um, about 13 months. About 13 months. And Omega has come such a long way. Rob, a little backstory on you. What are your What's your day like? So for me, m most of it is a lot of like ebbs and flows. Um, like one day, like I could wake up and like feel great, and then the other day I could wake up and just feel like horrible, like 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 a total like gray space, and like my mind's very clouded. Um, like I don't really get angry or anything. My like thing is like I shut down a lot. Like if like something triggers me or something like that, I will shut down. So like my wife or somebody will ask me like, you know, like, you know, why aren't you talking? Why aren't you doing something? Um, so that's up really for me is I shut down a lot and just don't talk to people. Like I don't go out, I don't do anything. Um, so and you then, guys are just polar opposites yeah, of the way <laughs> Pretty much. And, and that's what I think we need to know that PTSD affects each veteran differently. There's no no PTSD with the same symptoms with every Absolutely. veteran. I mean, yeah. it, it's, it just depends on how it's affecting that veteran. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think a lot of people, do people need to be afraid of somebody that has PTSD? Absolutely. Is there a stigma attached to it? Yes. There is definitely a stigma attached okay. to it. And, and that's just total ludicrous. I mean, it's... A, a, Nothing behind that at all. Hmm. No, I don't think so. I don't believe so. Okay. Has has the VA helped you with treatment? Has that been a factor in getting better? Yes. For me, absolutely. Has it? Yes. And what about you? 
I would say, like, for the most part, yes. Like, I go to therapy, or was going to therapy, like, regularly, like, once a week. Now I'm at, like, once a month because I'm starting to get better. But the VA has helped me, and I found other outlets, like Canine for Veterans, Merging Veterans with Players, like, other nonprofits for veterans that have helped me actually mm -hmm. tremendously as well. Well, these service dogs play a big role in your day-to-day -day activities, correct? Yes. Okay. Tell us how that how that. What are some of your triggers for PTSD? Let me just <laughs> go ahead. Um, again, I, I get anger out. Well, so I, I vary. I can be, I can have an anger outburst or I can shut down. Um, I can get extremely sad. Um, so yeah, I, I actually, I bounce all over the place. But is there anything that brings it on more than anything Stress. else does? Stress, yes. Stress, though. same stress, and same then material. like if like I ever you know like suicide's a big thing among the vet uh, community, and like that'll trigger um, just so if you like, hear about a feelings. veteran yeah. who committed suicide, that's, yeah, that's that a instantly. trigger for you. Oh, absolutely. Do you know of any of your friends that have taken their life because of their PTSD? Yeah, more stateside than I know that died in combat. Right, more stateside. Yes. I wow. just lost a friend two weeks ago. Suicide? Yes. That's got to be hard to, to deal with. It really does as, as a veteran, seeing that one of your buddies going through what you're going through, and he couldn't cope, and he mm -hmm. took that ultimate stand and decided to take his life, which has got to have a profound effect on, on your guys, you know, and, and oh, the way sure. you look at it, everything. Um, Getting back to your day-to-day -day activities, what makes you happy? Makes me happy. Um, music, animals, um, my relationship. Okay, which is a new one. Yes. We love Kate, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? I would say uh, my wife, my kids, Eleven, my dog, like every day he, like just because his breed wakes me up and like I have to take him on a long walk, throw the ball, like I mean he needs about five miles of exercise a day so Whoa. he keeps me going like nonstop. <laughs> um, and that's that. something like I actually needed like and Kate saw that for me and she saw that like I needed it, um, like a dog that pretty much made me work and get up and do things and get out of the house and that's well, tremendously and, and that's what we tell a lot of our veterans that are coming into the program a lot of them didn't want to get up in the morning yep. they would just lay in bed or be a couch potato all day sit there and watch tv you know 6 mm -hmm. 12 8, 18 hours a day but when you have a service animal you have to get out of bed that dog's got to be fed it's got to be taken out it's got to go for a walk it, it's, it's just a lot of maintenance on a service dog. So we tell our veterans coming into the program, this is work. It's not just all fun and games. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? So, you know, we, we let them know up front that you're gonna put a lot into it, but then it gives them a reason to get up. Where, like we just said, that typically they, they would just lay around all day and wouldn't be motivated. This service dog gives them the, the, the wherewithal to get out of bed because they have to take care of that dog. Absolutely. Since I've got an Omega, I have a sense of purpose. Yeah. Right. And and that, I think, is what a lot of our veterans are lacking. You know, when we come home, you know, we're so used to being told what to do, when to do, how to do it, why we're doing it, that we don't have that anymore when we come mm -hmm. home. It's like, now what? You know? Mm -hmm. So now you're at a total loss because, like I said, you're so regimented with your day, daily routine in the military that when you come home, it's like, what do I do with myself now? Mm, you know, yeah. everything has changed for the most part, you know, so sure. these dogs then definitely give you a purpose. I mean, I, I watch our veterans come into the program and they're real maybe apprehensive. Do, do I really need a service dog? Do I want to walk around with a service dog that has a patch on it that says PTSD in training? You know, I mean, it's like having a neon sign. But we tell all our veterans that you have to ask for the help before you can get better. If you don't admit that you need help, there's no getting better. Because there's no way you're going to combat this on your own. Am I right? 
Yep. Correct. You need to get whatever help you can get where you can get it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and again, I think what you guys coming forward and coming into the program has helped you tremendously. I've seen the tra transformation that each one of you have made from when you started, you know, to, to where you're at now. And, it, mm -hmm. you know, and if there's anything that makes me feel good is when I see that. You know, because now we have veterans in class that are doing their training. Oh, my dog's better than your dog. My dog could turn on a light better than your dog. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it, you know, and, and then you form a bond with other veterans that are going through sure. the same thing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I can't talk m enough about what these service dogs can help, just like what it's doing for you you guys. I mean, you we, we were talking before the show about psychedelics. Yeah. Well, give me a little backstory on that. So, like, there's, you know, um, there's, like, MAPS, MP, um, MAPS PBC is a organization that does, like, MDMA, um, psilocybin, LSD trials, like, for combat veterans, uh, trying to help combat veterans, uh, like, almost kind of, like, subside their PTSD symptoms. So it allows, they kind of, like, go through a, a trip and there's like a therapist that walks them through it as well and it's typically like three to four treatments and most people have like they're not like on ssris or any other drugs anymore and i know john hopkins is doing it like there's a lot of trials out there and they're seeing like even other reasons like for these drugs and it's been effective and it's been effective yes that's a, you know any help that we can give our veterans that that are going through these struggles with PTSD. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's amazing. If, it, if it's something that'll work, God bless, they should be doing it. Yes. You know, yeah. they, uh, uh, you know, Kyle, you were in the military, you came home, and you were struggling. What made you decide to get help? Um, my family was a very big supporter. Um, they saw me come from a very dark place and uh, they pushed me to seek help. So for me, like, uh, I honestly didn't think I really had much of anything until I got out and after about three months, like, I lost a friend in Afghanistan and then, like, three friends committed suicide within, like, about six months. And then, like, things kind of really went downhill and it was my wife that essentially called me out on it and told me like you know i need to start going to the va and seeking help and ever since then it's just been like a kind of an uphill like battle or just keep trying to keep going and finding help and along the way i have it's, i've been out like almost 15 years now and it's like i feel like i've gone a long ways from right when i got out of the army what would you recommend to a veteran that may be listening that is struggling with PTSD? What would you say to them? I mean, if they just got out of the army, like one thing for me was finding like a mentor, like somebody, even if they're not like in the military, but somebody that can help you kind of navigate through life and like actually learn the civilian side of life and help you, you know, find a job or get education. And then also find a mentor who's like a veteran as well, who can help you sh or show you like all the VA resources, how to use your GI Bill. Like there's so many other organizations and things like, you know, our canines for veterans and service dogs and things that I didn't even know about in like for 10 years until like I ran into one when I was at um, another organization. So I, that to me, having a mentor when I got out was my one of my biggest things that really helped me. In my what about you? Um, I went, as soon as I got out, I went straight into the VA healthcare system. Um, so I had that going for me right away. I got, um, into different treatments right off the bat. Um, but it was nice. Uh, I eventually found a mentor friend or a mentor that got me into the program, um, and essentially became a life coach for a while. So you would recommend anybody that's getting out that's struggling with PTSD to get somebody to help them. Yeah, sure. Understand the transition from military life to civilian. That's gotta be a, a big struggle. It, it's a big jump, especially like 
for me. Like I went in when I was 18, it was five days after I graduated high school, I was in the army and then literally I graduated college 10 years later on the exact same day I joined the army. So it, it like, it's just weird. And it's just like a night and day when you get out. I don't know. <laughs> um, for me, it was, uh, I'm sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> what? I lost it. No, me. that's okay. Like when you um, joined the military, like were you... Oh, I'm um, sorry. And then getting out. Okay. Uh, I joined while I was still in high school. So um, I had a break between uh, high school and going active. Um, and then I was active for seven years. Um, so my transition to getting out was I immediately threw myself into a job and I put a hundred percent into that job for an extended period of time. So I didn't really, I was either working or at the VA. One or the other. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I, I, I talked to a lot of veterans and, and they say that's the biggest pitfall is coming home and not knowing what to do with themselves. Yeah not having anybody to help them with transitioning back into civilian life. So does the VA assist you in that at all? There, you know, is there anything, when you're being released from the military and been diagnosed with PTSD, is there any kind of program that, or any kind of thing that they prepare you for or your family um, I wouldn't know. I was I was only diagnosed officially about a year ago, so this is all still new, very new to me. You know, I, I've also often said that you know if a veteran's being discharged because of his PTSD, they they need to prepare the family for the veteran that's coming home because it's not the same guy that left. Oh, okay, he's going to have some baggage that he's going to have to deal right. with. And I think if they would prepare the families better for the for the, the guy that's coming home with PTSD, that the family would have a better understanding of his needs and what's going to help him get through the day. And there'll be a lot less divorces going on. Yeah. Instead of spending time in ACAP, like writing resumes. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, now... As far as getting back to the training, what do you like best about your training with your service dog, Kyle? What do I like best? Um, the focus that I get and that he has developed to where we become a very proficient team. Um, I'm to the point where I can put him on a place bed or put him in, a, in one spot and walk away for a half an hour and he won't move. Well, you're also working with K9 as an assistant trainer. Yes. That, I find that amazing. It really, you came into the program and now you're helping other veterans with their training. Yes. All right. And you're also going out speaking on, as I mentioned earlier, speaking on behalf of K9. Yes. I've gotten very involved in the program yeah, yeah, since my have. first day. Rob, we need to get you on involved. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm involved as much as I can be right now. I do work on top of it. You got a busy it. schedule, I know. Yeah, I got a busy schedule. And, and then that's, I mean, all because of Canine for Veterans is why me and my wife got um, our, uh, like, dog, Finn, that we're going to train to be a therapy dog to Tell help us about veterans. That. Tell us about that. Um, so, like, after getting 11, me and my wife, um, well, I ended up having my second back surgery from an injury in the army. So my wife actually had to take 11 to training for about a month and a half while I was recovering from my back surgery. And she saw how like amazing it was and how like the, how you could train dogs like in ways that people really never like you, you, you just don't see out in the real world. And then after really going through training with him, we saw like that if we're going to have another dog, we wanted to have like a working purpose and we, she didn't, doesn't need a personal service dog, but we thought of another way to help veterans is through a therapy dog. And there's like the road home program and the VA um, and all of that. Right. So that's why we bought a dog and are now training it to be a therapy dog. So you're planning on taking the dogs like the VA hospital and 
the VA, the Road Home Program, right. to Canine for Veteran events. So people can pet our dog Finn all they want, and right. they, our personal service dogs don't need to worry about getting asked to be petted as much. He's, the, he's going to be the ultimate distraction. Yes. Man. Yeah, exactly. Um, what, getting back to the, the your day-to-day life, what are what are some of the things that really upset you the most that would bring on a PTSD trigger? I mean, a lot of people say it's noises, uh, just something that will remind them of what caused that PTSD. I mean, like, it, to me, a lot of it is like what Kyle said is, is just like stress, like anxiety, like just an overwhelming like day and then like triggering like events like hearing suicides um like there was early on in my like like getting out i could like it was smells sounds like those things triggered that that but it's subsided actually since then and with probably therapy and some help kyle um mine was like i said um anger outbursts i was just even though I'm very good natured, yeah. there is that flip side, and I kept yeah. it in check very well. But again, someone saw it while I was at work, brought it to my attention, and um, now it's just everyday stressors. Um, depending on the severity of you know everything going on, it's amazing the the, the change that you've made since you've been in the program oh absolutely because i see you a lot and i see how you interact with the other veterans and now you're teaching them Mm -hmm. how to react with their dog and i you know to me you've come such a long way so this program has really helped you i know personally uh, an awful lot and having kate by your side is a is another is a blessing yes big plus so what would you say, again, I, I, I asked this before, what would you say to a veteran that's coming home that's thinking about maybe getting a service dog? I would highly recommend it because it forces you to like do something again and kind of you're, you, like, you have to kind of go to training. You got to dedicate yourself to it. And it kind of reminds you of that military um, aspect as well. Um, and then on top of it, you get to hang out with other veterans as well. So it's a huge uh, plus as well. I was going to say, yeah, the socialization of it all. Yeah. Well, I'm getting that two-minute warning, guys. So I want to thank you for being my guest tonight. And, you know, keep doing what you're doing because you guys have come such a long way. I mean, I- I'm looking forward to working with you, you know, in the future. Absolutely. And, and just seeing the progress that you're making, it, it's just mind-blowing. It really is. So God bless you for, for reaching out and getting the help that you need. Well, thank you. And thank you for starting K9 for Veterans. Yes. Well, you know what? I mean, if there's anything that's, that I can say that makes me feel good is when I could see these service dogs have such an effect on, on our veterans. It really does. So, again, if you're a veteran out there and you're struggling with PTSD, don't hesitate. Call, reach out to K9. I'll give you the phone number. It's 773-854-1000. Uh, just give us a call. Let us know that you're thinking about getting a service dog, and we'll talk to you. We'll let you know all about the program, how it works, what we could expect from you, and what you could expect from us. So thank you.